Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. A few weeks ago, I showed you how to make the bloom earrings. Well, today, I want to show you how to make the bloom ring. Now, to be able to make this ring, we're going to have to adjust some of the steps from the bloom earrings. And so, I'll tell you each step that we have to adjust as we go through it. But to do this ring, you're going to need six six millimeter fire polish beads, 14 four millimeter fire polish beads, 23 to 30 three millimeter fire polish beads. Now, these beads are for the band of the ring. Then you're going to need 12 four millimeter bicones, 18 three millimeter bicones, one eight millimeter chiton, one gram of a size 11 seed bead one gram of a size 15 seed bead, 12 inches of a 0.5 uh, millimeter stretch magic. Now this is if you want your ring band to have some stretch to it. You're going to need two yards of thread, either 1G or 6 pound fire line. Either one of those will work in a size 12 beading needle. You definitely want the 12 needle because you're going to be going through 15s several times. And do not go over a 6 pound fire line because if you do, you will have some problems trying to get through these beads. Now, um... I think that's it. So today I am going to be doing mainly like a black and silver palette. I tried this ring a few weeks ago and I wore it a couple of weeks to actually make sure, um, you know, it was going to turn out the way that I wanted it to and it was going to wear good. You have to understand that this is more of like a cocktail ring, so it's not a ring that's going to be worn every day, but more like a ring that's going to be worn with special um, outfits or special occasions. So go ahead and get your materials together and we'll get started. I have my palette of beads laid out. I'm going to be using jet three, four, and six millimeters. I'm going to be using silver thunder polish beads for my four and threes, bicones. I'm using a jet hematite chiton and then a jet 11 o and a nickel 15 o So it's mainly like a, a more neutral palette. And I'm going to start out with two yards of thread and I'm going to pick up a 15, a six millimeter, a 15 and three four millimeters. I'm going to let these beads drop down and you can either go back through them all again and tie them together or tie them together whichever one works best for you. I know some people have a hard time if they aren't careful they get that 15 caught up in the, the knot. But I'm just going to do a knot here and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the four millimeter right where the knot is. Pick up two four millimeters, a 15, a six millimeter, and a 15. My thread is coming out of the bottom of the four millimeter, so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come right back down through that bead to make another box. Now with this box, I'm going to take and I'm going to go through the two four millimeters that I just added. So I'm going through this one and this one. I'm going to start again with a 15, a six millimeter, a 15, and two four millimeters. My thread is coming out of the top of my four millimeters. So I'm going to come right back up through it to make that circle. And this time I'm going to go through the 15, the 6, the 15, and the 4 millimeter. So I'm going through four beads. This time it's two four millimeters, a 15, a six, and a 15. Take your needle, go back down through the four millimeter. And then through the two four millimeters you just added. Okay. 
All right, so that gives you one, two, three, four boxes. So I'm working on the fifth, which is going to start out a 15, a 6, a 15, and two fours. I'm going to come right back up through the same bead that I'm coming out of to make a box. And this will give me five boxes. We need six boxes total, so we are going to connect the ends together now to make the sixth box. So my thread is coming out towards the center of my little circle here. So I'm going to pick up a four millimeter and I'm going to come through the four millimeter here on the other end of the strip going from the inner circle out towards my six millimeters. And that's going to pull that together. And then I'll do a 15, a 6, and a 15. And this time I'll go through the 4 millimeter on the end so that it finishes out my little circle or box, whatever you want to call it. And at this point, your piece will be domed. Have a pretty good dome to it if you've done a right, correct tension. So I'm going to go ahead and can go through the 4 millimeter that I just added, the side 4 millimeter, the 15, the 6, the 15, the 4 millimeter, and the 4 millimeter. So I'm basically just going to go through that box to reinforce it one more time and hold it together a little bit better as you do the next couple of stitches. Now at this point you can go ahead and thread a needle onto that tail thread and stitch through a few beads to get rid of that tail thread. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that I can have rid of this thread. So I've gotten rid of my tail thread and now you can see better the, how the piece is domed. I'm going to stitch through. I'm exiting out of my four millimeter here and I'm just going to stick the needle through the center of the circle here so that my thread will actually be here on the back side. And I'm going to flip it to where I'm mainly looking at the six millimeters. For this ring to lay straight up and down on your finger, we're going to have to center the ring bands over two four millimeters. If you don't really care how your ring lays, you can center it over one four millimeter. It's up to you. But I like to center it over two. So I'm coming out here on the back. I'm going to thread on three 11s. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and thread on one more. I'm going to thread on four 11s, one four millimeter, and four 11s. Now, you can do three or four, up to you, depending on the size um, brand beads that you're going to use. But my thread is coming out of this bead right here. Okay, it's coming out of this one. So I'm going to come from the one before it, and I'm going to go through the two beads here so that it makes a circle. So when I pull that thread, it's going to look like this. And it's going to center the little ring shank over those two beads. You'll have to add your ring shank on this step because if you don't and you try to go back and finish it at the end, like you try to go back and add it at the end, it is not going to work. Um, so you just want to make sure that you go ahead and add your ring shanks to it before you do anything else. So that way when you finish, you can actually finish out the band. All right, so I have the ring shank for this side. Now I'm going to stitch through one, two, three, let's see. Yeah, three more beads. So one, two, three. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up four 11s, one four millimeter, and four, ah, four 11s. My thread is coming out of this bead right here. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come through this one and this one. I'm going to come right back up through those two beads so that now you have your little ring shanks here and I'm going to go ahead and reinforce this one and if you're having a hard time seeing my colors 
um, I did not want to do the same colors that I did in the last video and I love this color palette sample so if you're having a hard time seeing the colors that I've used or seeing it you can go back to my bloom earrings because I used a very very bright color in it um, but for those of you who have your brightness turned up on your screens I don't think you'll have a problem whatsoever okay so now I'm gonna flip it back over I have my ring shanks on the back have the top here to work with so from where I'm coming out on the back I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go up through a four millimeter okay, through a 15 a 6 and a 15 and then down through the next four millimeter so just like with our bloom earrings you have a center circle of six and then you have, let me move these so I can hold it good. And then you have your sixes here along the edges next, or you have your four millimeters here next to your six millimeters. So those are the ones that we're going to be working with. So from where I'm coming out towards the center, I'm going to pull this back here just a little bit. Whoops, sorry guys. Okay, I'm going to pick up a three millimeter, a size 11 seed bead, and a four millimeter bicone two fifteens just like last week my thread is coming out of the four millimeter I'm going to come to the next four millimeter and I'm going to come through it going from outside to inside so that it makes a diagonal across the base so again that is a three millimeter an 11 O a four millimeter two fifteens I'm going to come to the next four millimeter and I'm going to go down through that four millimeter and I'm going to continue to do this four more times. So as you can see my piece like right now looks kind of like a hot mess express but we are going to fix that. Um, we're going to work backwards this time to fill in our blanks that we have so I'm picking up a three millimeter I'm coming to the last little diagonal that I did and I'm going to come right up through the size 11 seed bead that's right in between those crystals and I'm going to put my finger on it as I pull those beads so it'll keep it tight there where I need it to be. Now I'm going to pick up a four millimeter and whoop, two fifteens. I'm going to come to the next four millimeter here and go through it from outside to inside so that it completes that little X shape. So a three millimeter, whoops, I'm going to go through the 11 right in between my crystals, put my finger on it and pull so it'll stay tight. Now a four millimeter and two fifteens. and I'm going to come down through the next four millimeter to finish out that shape and you'll want to complete the next four boxes just so like this. So I have my embellishments all the way around and just like last or just like the bloom earrings we're ready to add the river or our chaton on the inside so from where my thread is coming out it doesn't matter if I start working to the um, right or to the left whichever way I just have to continue in that direction so I'm going to go up through the three millimeter right at where I'm exiting and then down through the next three millimeter I'm going to thread on one well if I can pick it up one eleven o and I'm going to go up through the next three millimeter and then down through the next one. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop a little 11 o right there in between. So I'm going to pick up an 11, go up through a three millimeter, down through the three millimeter, and I'm going to do this all the way around putting in those 11s in between my six sets of crystals. Now that I've gone all the way around, I'm exiting an 11 o that I added, and I'm going to lay my chaton right down in the center of my piece. 
I'm going to thread on three 15s, and let me give me some 15s here. Three 15s, and I'm going to go through the next 11 that I added. So it's going to, I'm going to skip the crystals and then go through that next 11 0 seed bead and pull that through. Three 11s, and then skip the crystals, go through the next, or I'm sorry, three 15s skip the crystals and go through the next 11 O. And as you do this, you're really going to have to hold that chaton in place and pull your thread very tight. So three 15s, skip those and then go through the next 11. Having the ring shank on the bottom really affects the center of this piece. So you really, like I said, you have to pull nice and tight as you go around through here and you're going to have to reinforce these beads again so that it will all pull together and hold that chaton in place. If not, you're going to be wearing it and your chaton is going to fall out. So make sure, I know that we all like to skimp sometimes, but don't skimp on this step. So let's see. Come on. Oh. Okay, there we go. All right, and you can see how it's really getting in there. And you just, like I said, you just have to keep pulling it tight. And then three. And once I add this one and I go through this 11, I'm back to where I started. Alright, and then I'm going to go through again and reinforce those beads. And when I reinforce, I'm going to stitch through the beads to exit any 6 millimeter here along the outer so edge. So I've got my chaton in there, and I'm exiting a 6 millimeter here along the outer edge. I'm going to thread on an 11, a 3 millimeter, and an 11. I'm going to skip this open space and go through the next 6 millimeter here along the outer edge. And pull so when you pull it's going to look something like this. Now we'll want to do this all the way around the edge adding an 11, a 3 millimeter and an 11 and going through the next 6 millimeter. So you're not going through the 15s just the 6 millimeters and you, you may have one that kind of sticks up like this and if you do just kind of pull that and get it down in there and you'll want to do this all the way around. So I've gone all the way around adding my three millimeters and I am exiting out of an 11, a three millimeter and an 11. Now if you'll remember on the bloom earrings we put embellishments along all of our beads here on the outer edge. For the bloom ring, we're not going to do that. We're only going to put embellishments along the six millimeters. And the reason why is because the embellishment over these four, three millimeters kept wanting to kind of fall down and go to the back of the ring. So I've added on seven 15s. I'm skipping the six millimeter and I'm going to go through the 11, the three millimeter, and the 11 so that my beads are just going to go around that six millimeter. Now, seven fifteens. Skip the six and go through the eleven, the three, and the eleven. And you're going to do this all the way around. And once you get all the way around, you want to exit the fourth bead of your first set of seven. So you'll go through four beads. So you're coming out of that middle bead so there. As you can see, our seed bead embellishments here are just along the outer edge now and I'm coming out of the fourth bead of a set of seven. I'm going to pick up four 15s. Now if you're using Toho seed beads you might only want to pick up three. But I'm going to do four and I'm going to come to this next bicone here because my thread's exiting in this direction and I'm going to go through well, I would say I was going to go through the two seed beads there, but evidently I only put on one on the side. So I'm going to go through that one. 
and then I'm going up through the two seed beads under the next four millimeter. Pick up four fifteens. I'm going to go through the middle bead of the next set of seven, just the middle bead, and I'm going to pull that, and then four fifteens, and I'm going to go down through the set of two fifteens under the next four millimeter, and up through the two fifteens under the next one. And I'm going to continue this until I've got my embellishments all the way around and then I'm going to tie off the third. So, see now that I have the top of my ring component completed, it looks a little different from the blue earrings, like I said, only because it doesn't have the rest of those little embellishments on it. Now you're ready to finish out your ring band and we already have our little shanks here. The good thing is you don't have to worry about covering up the back of your chaton because it's um, basically it is uh, protected by these four millimeters here on the back. One thing that I like to find handy with this project is I use my little tulip awl here and get in here where these this four millimeter is and I kind of pull it up so that I can get my thread through it. So I'm going to be using some .5 Stretch Magic and I'm just going to take it and go through the 4 millimeter. And you can see how easy it was to kind of get it in there with that. Um, let me back up here just a little bit so that you guys can see. There we go. Okay, this is where I'm going to be using my 3 millimeter fire polish beads. And you will thread on one 3 millimeter onto each side. And then thread on one 3 millimeter. And I'm going to cross the threads opposite ways. So I'm going to thread it on. I'm going to kind of put it over my finger like this and then I'm going to go through it in the other direction with the other thread so that when I pull both threads opposite ways that gives me my little first box here to do the project with. Now you'll just continue until you have the desired length. So again it's just putting one little three millimeter onto each thread and then one three millimeter I'm going to put it on my finger and go through it in the opposite direction with the other thread so that now I have the second right angle weave box. And I'm just going to continue and when I finish out the desired length, I want to end with one bead So on I've got side. the length of my band and I've got my uh, <laughs> three millimeter on each side here. Now I'm going to go to the other side for my ring shank and same thing just like I did on the first side I'm going to stick my little tulip all in here and kind of pull that bead up a little bit that I'm going to be going through now I'll put my thumb right under it and then I'm going to take one side of my thread and I'm going to go through that bead pull it through and then I'm going to tie these two threads together. And when I tie them together, I'm going to be very careful not to get the three millimeter caught inside of that knot. And then do it again. And pull it tight. Because if it's going to break, you want it to break at this point. You don't want to be wearing it and it break. So you want to pull it tight. Don't be afraid of it. A lot of people are afraid of stretch cord. And I'm just like, look. It's beading, there ain't nothing you can't fix. All right, so I've got that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim off those cords so that now, when you get finished, you have a really pretty bloom ring. Now, this, as I said, this is the um, black and the hematite colors, but I also did colors to match what I showed you guys a few weeks ago. So this is the gold that went with the bloom earrings, uh, the gold and the bronze. And then this one is the Pacific Opal. So you can see 
that, um, you know, just like the bloom earrings, I've got the rings to match. So we will have kits for all three color samples um, for this So week. I hope you guys enjoyed learning the new bloom ring. I know I have enjoyed wearing um, this ring the last few weeks and I've got lots of great compliments on it. So like I said, we do have kits available for all three color choices as well as the written pattern which can be found at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. While you're there, you'll also notice two new categories that I've added on the website. I've added a finished jewelry category. So basically, when I finish making like these samples, I'm going to go ahead and price them and put them on, um, on there. So if you don't necessarily want to make it, you can buy it. And also, we've got a new clearance section where we're going to start putting in um, all the stuff that we are clearancing out here in the store. I know right now I've got some older issues of Beadwork Magazine. So you can again, you can check that out at Off Beaded Path beadstore.com be sure to come back next week because it's going to be a three day event i'm going to be showing you a bracelet that matches this set and literally if i tried to do one video it would be so long we would all get bored with it so it's going to be broken up into three days next week. So you get to see me all week next week, Monday through Thursday. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.